So, here we go. The first cast. I've put my uh, Orvis Batten Kill uh, Mid Arbor Reel on. Got a seven weight shooting headline. And I've put one of Martin's copper stalking bugs on to start with. Do a little bit of line casting to start the day. It's difficult seeing through the water at the moment. Fish on. So, third cast with the new rod, and I am into a fish which is hanging very, very deep, feels very powerful. It was just an absolutely slamming take. Just pulled the line right out of my hands. Tell you what, Andy, this feels quite decent. Going right across in front of Andy at the moment. Can you see it under your feet there? You could have done, yeah, it would have saved me some effort. What Andy was saying is he could have netted the fish for me there, it got so close to him. Tell you what, feels nice on this little twig, Andy. Right up against the bank in the reeds there. Right, what's going to be interesting now is that huge frond of weed could slide down the line. in the net. And boys and girls, it's a big brown. 
It's a stunning brown. And there's not a hook within a foot of its mouth. <laughs> so, back in a second. So, there you go boys and girls. That's why it was such a struggle. It's hooked in the dorsal fin. Not a bad start to the day. Not a bad start to the day at all. So I'll just put this on the let me put this on the stringer. a beautiful fish. Look at the colours on that. Isn't he beautiful? And that's your five weight? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The, same blank. the wand. Shows your skill levels, you can get the hook to go in the mouth. <laughs> it's beautiful colours on it. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful diva rainbow. So we've been fishing less than five minutes. Is that all it is now? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? So, to get that tug on the rod, isn't it? Isn't it ever? <laughs> so when did you start making the blanks, with the, the rods? Um, it's only probably just over a year ago now. Mm. And how did you get into it? I decided I'd, I was having a look online at all different rods and stuff, and um, I saw an advert for the bloke rod blanks. So then I, I thought about it a few times, and I, in the end I thought, I'm just going to go for it, I'm just going to buy one. So I brought one out a go, but I had a conversation with Mick, who owns Bloke Rods. Very, very helpful, with every stage of the way through it. Mm. He had YouTube clips, videos of how to do whatever. Um, his information is brilliant, because he's been doing it for 20 odd years. Mm. So then I decided to have a go. I made a few mistakes on my first rod, as you do. Mm -hmm. And I've learned from my own experiences, really, and from Mick helping me. And after that, then I started um, making them for friends. Mm. And then it's just escalated from there. So how many have you done over these last no, couple I've of years? Count. Um, there's probably about 70 or 80 in circulation. Wow. I know I've got a good one, the way that held on to that brown trout there. Yeah, I was amazed yeah. to be honest. I mean, I've got some lovely rods, Orvis, Hardy, mm. even Airflow. So do you I'm, just do fly rods? Or yes, yeah. fly rods and, and salmon. Mm. Um, I've only ever done one salmon rod up to now, mm. but it's exactly the same principle. Mm. But yeah, they're beautiful rods. So how, how quickly were you able to pick up the, the whipping of the eye, the, the runners um, and the, the likes of that? After Was watching it? loads of YouTube clips, yeah. and then, like I said, I had a first go. I had to reband my first rod because I, I mucked up a few guides. Mm -hmm. um, I think most people, when they start, they put too many whippings on. Yeah, that was that was my problem. I, I made a couple of sea rods, a couple of beach caster type rods, um, and these things you needed two hands just to get them out of the pack, let alone cast yeah, them like, sure, the right, six yeah. ounces. And I found that the the whippings of the the rings were so chunky, no matter what I tried to do. I mean, maybe it was the fact that I was using rope to tie them on and not the whipping <laughs> the whipping maybe, yeah. um, cottons, but. But I have learned, obviously, that you get the guides and they're not, they're not prepped for you to put on the blank. You've got mm. to use a Dremel and get the point down, mm. just so you can get the, the whipping to, sl to slide up on the guide foot mm. easily. Mm. If it's too much of a step, yeah. then it, it'll always show the step. Mm. You know, yeah, show I mean, I've got short, stubby fingers and they're, they're not built for delicate work. <laughs> not built for delicate work at all. 
I, mean, I could never have followed my father's footsteps. He was a watchmaker, oh, okay. um, yeah. but I could never have followed his footsteps. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, no, enjoy. this is just such a fabulous start. Well, I enjoy making them. I really do. It's mm. a hobby that I, I really enjoy doing. And mm. It's really nice to turn up on a fishery. Um, and there's, there's last week I went down to Rockbourne with a few few friends and stuff. Like acquaintances through fishing and there was one, two, three, four. There was five of us fishing out of the 11, 12 down there, all with my rods. And it's a lovely feeling watching yeah. them catch on a rod that I've made. Yeah. I mean, last time I was down at Rockbourne, I met Niall um, and he insisted on me pulling his rod. First two occasions I cast it, I stuffed it up a tree. <laughs> And I kept on saying, the rod is telling me no, go for it, Chris, go for it, go for it, Chris, go on. And yeah, I, I just felt so aware, the, not only the work that had gone in, but the, the, the value that it had as far as Neil was concerned. It was his bespoke rod, his, made specially for him. And he's letting an ex-butcher like me loose with this fabulous, fabulous piece of kit. Let's face it, to be honest, you turn up on a fishery or something and you're using a fly that you've chosen, you're using a rod that you've chosen, you're using a line, a line and reel that you've chosen. A lot of it's all down to your inner confidence. Mm. If you've not got confidence in any of the kit that you've got, you won't catch. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if something gives you that extra edge of confidence, then so be it, go for mm. it. Well, one, well, two casts, one fish, decent brown, Solid lump, really solid take, great pull, fantastic balance. I love the grip. The grip just gives me so much reassurance in my hand. Um, so let's see what happens when I get the grip wet. See whether it is still as yeah. good. But first impressions. Um, oh, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to be sticking quite close to you and videoing some of your sure. catches as the day goes on. Because sure. I mean, yeah. So. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Banting of Drew Fly Rods, right? He's proven that they work. I've got a fabulous brown already in the net, albeit caught in the, the dorsal fin, but that takes almost as much skill to catch a fish in the dorsal fin. Um, the strike has to be timed perfectly. Especially the so, it in. Uh, absolutely right. Now, my appraisal of the bloke rod Built for me by Andy Banting uh, of Drew Rods. Spoken with him at length. Um, the rod is absolutely superb. For a five weight rod, it has immense power. The great control, tremendous feel. The, the only thing I would change would be the line that I used. I used a um, very slow intermediate line more of a sink tip line and it didn't really go through the guides as well as I would have liked. Um, towards the end I managed to um, work out the pace uh, of casting stroke, the amount of um, pop that I needed to put into it um, and also how much of the actual shooting head of the line I needed to have through the, the guides before getting the line. It would be a different proposition if I were using um, a shooting headline. Um, I think I would be able to cast it more consistently um, and cast it further with a shooting headline. Um, it, it feels to me as though you need to go um, one weight line up. Uh, my rod could quite comfortably handle a 7-8 weight line um, and still give the casting distance and still give the casting accuracy. Quite honestly, it's a superb piece of kit. I was concerned um, about the grip, um, what it would feel like, what the carbon would feel like when wet, but it turns out that even when wet, this carbon grip is just, it's so tacky, it's so comfortable in the hands, there's no slipping in the hands, you have full control. Even with a light hand grip that I use, it's simply a superb piece of kit. And for the investment made, um, 
I know of no better rod. The power that you have, the balance that you have, the, the construction of the rod is just simply superb. It is class, utter class. And that's down to the skills of Andy Banting. It's down to the quality of the blank. Simply a superb piece of kit. Speaking with Andy, I asked him if um, he makes any other type of rod or builds any other type of rod. And he said at the moment he's focusing just on the fly rod because the, the suppliers of the blanks only do. But he did say that if any of you have a rod um, that you would like him to build and have the kit but don't know how to go about it, then he will very, very happily build the rod for you uh, to the same incredibly high standard uh, that he applies to the fly rods. Um, he has skills. Undoubtedly, he has, has great skills. Uh, I feel very, very privileged to own a custom handmade bloke rod. And my bloke rod is endorsed with my nickname, Grandpa Chris, and he will endorse your rods as you would like. And in a conversation to be had, how you would like Andy to build your rod. All in all, um, I'm very, very happy, very impressed with the work that Andy has done. Personally, he's an immensely generous man. He is a very knowledgeable man. Um, yeah, uh, I'm proud to call him my friend. So, this is Grandpa Chris heading back up towards London. Wishing you all well. Um, thank you for listening. And by all means, look for Andy Banting online and give him a call because he's an immensely approachable man. So, tight lines, boys and girls, tight lines.